Hi, my name is Ethan, and I work for the Artesian Alliance, which is Chiha Park and Zoo, the Flint River Aquarium, and Throna Tisca Heritage Center here in Albany, Georgia. And I am going to be reading you guys a book for Read Across America Day. The book I've chosen is called There's a Zoo in Room 22, and it's by Judy Sierra. We asked Ms. Darling, may we get a truly awesome classroom pet? She answered yes, or better yet, let's choose a whole pet alphabet. Here's the pages. Amanda Anaconda. Amanda Anaconda is our pet for letter A. We think Amanda's wonderful and every single way. She's nicer than an aardvark or an ant or armadillo. And at story time, each one of us can use her for a pillow. You can see they're all using her for a pillow here. For B, we've got Boring Beetle Bill. Our Boring Beetle's name is Bill. Bill's jaws are sharp for drilling. He tunneled through Miss Darling's chair. He found the flavor thrilling. The chair collapsed. Miss Darling fell. She telephoned the carpenter. Bill Beetle has a boring job now. He's our pencil sharpener. And if you can look, he's the pencil sharpener there. And you can see his handiwork right over here. Claude the Cat. Presenting Claude, our classroom cat, the famous feline acrobat, at 9.15, Claude takes a walk across the chalkboard to the clock, salutes the flag, then grabs the pole, performs a triple forward roll, lands neatly on Miss Darling's lap, curls up and purrs and takes a nap. Cats are kind of crazy, huh? As you can see, it's doing all of its acrobatic feats. Our dog, Doug. Do you think this is a rug? Nope, it's really our dog, Doug. He lets us roll him like a log. Doug's a very lazy dog. For exercise, he snores and slobbers. Doug would never frighten robbers. He couldn't even catch a slug. What our dog, Doug, Doug does best is hug. And on the next page, we've got the electric eel. Please don't ask to feel our electric eel. Because if you bug him, we cannot unplug him. So here you can see Doug lying like a rug. And you've got the electric eel who looks pretty bothered at the moment. Maybe don't touch him. We've got Fletcher, Fraser, Fled, Fred, and Floyd. They fly through the air with the greatest of ease, using Claude the Cat's tail as a circus trapeze. They're fabulous artists, yet Claude is not pleased. No, it isn't much fun having fleas. And as you can see, ah, poor Claude the cat's got fleas. Gentle Jill. We have a guinea pig named Jill. Jill's very good at standing still. Why, sometimes she won't move for hours. Who'd guess that she has superpowers? Whenever we feel hurt or scared... Whenever life is just unfair, we find our guinea pig and pet her. Bam! Shazam! We're feeling better. As you can see, even the anaconda seems to enjoy the guinea pig's company. Alright, we're on to letter H. Heaps of hamsters. Have you seen our baby hamsters? Why do hamsters always hide? There is not a nook or cranny that they cannot get inside. I found hamsters in my backpack, in my sleeve and on my shoe, in my pocket, in my mitten, in my cup of carrot stew. Oh, I think I know the reason why our hamsters want to roam. They are bored with being at school and they want us to take them home. And here you can see there's a bunch of hamsters just all over the place. Oop, lost a page. Bunch of hamsters. On to I. Meg put Iggy on our shoulder. He's a super shoulder holder. Moments later, he grew bolder, and he climbed up on her head. 
Now begins the part that's creepy. Our iguana, feeling sleepy, made Meg's hair into a teepee, and her head is now his bed. As you can see, the iguana's hanging out on Meg's head. Return to sender, Jaguarundi. Special delivery, Jaguarundi, the UPS man told us Monday. He set the package on a shelf. It growled, it roared, it opened itself. A gentle pet this cat was not, with jaws that bit and claws that caught. We sadly sent her back and said, let's get a jellyfish instead. Probably a good idea. Katie, Katie did. Our Katie did kicked off the lid of her small cage, and then she hid. When we hear her singing, Katie did, did Katie, Katie, Katie did? Katie chirps the whole day long. We're awfully tired of her song. She won't stop singing. Katie did. Did Katie, Katie, Katie did? Now when Miss Darling says, confess, who broke the rules? Who made this mess? Then every kid sings, Katie did. Katie, Katie, Katie did. See here, the Katie did's making her beautiful song. Now we've got a lunchbox lemur. There's a lemur in my lunchbox. My banana's just a peel, and my candy bar's a wrapper. This is not a happy meal. There's a lemur in my lunchbox, and I do not want her there. Hmm, she left me half a sandwich. It was nice of her to share. You can see the lemur sharing half a sandwich. It's pretty nice. If I was a lemur, I don't think I'd share the sandwich. We asked the pet shop for a mouse, but by mistake they sent a moose. A moose would mash our mouse's house, and so we let him wander loose. We're pleased to have a classroom moose, even though he's mighty large. He holds our coats and boots and hats, and usually he doesn't charge. Here we can see everyone staring, and the moose holding all those hats. Mr. Smoot, our substitute, brought us Nick, the surfing newt. Most newts just nap, but not our Nick. Nick rides the waves on a popsicle stick. You can see he's riding those waves. Otto Octopus. Otto is an octopus from underneath the sea, and in our class he's learned a lot about geometry. He couldn't wait to imitate a rectangle and pentagon. He grew so bold he tried to fold into a hexaflexagon. His tentacles got tied in knots. He could not move a muscle. We spent two hours untangling our Otto Octopuzzle. You can see Otto got bit off a little bit more than he could chew there. Old Polly Parrot. Old Polly Parrot's the smartest of birds. She knows more than 270 words. That she learned as the pet of a pirate named Kemper, a man who, it said, had a very bad temper. Her first day in class, Polly opened her beak and was sent to the office for nearly a week. Since then, because Polly's a sensible creature, she only repeats words she hears from our teacher. Uh... Poor Polly. Knew a couple words that the teachers didn't like. Now we've got a quiet Quahog. We do not know our Quahog well. He always stays inside his shell. Each time we knock, the door goes slam. He's such an anti-social clam. As we can see, we've got a Quahog clam hanging out there. They're very cool when their eyes are open, but... Antisocial is definitely a good word for them. Our rat Ralph. Our Ralph's a laboratory rat. No rodent could be wiser. And that's why we appointed him our science fair advisor. Ralph savors each experiment. To please him is not easy. And if you wish to win first prize, your project must be cheesy. So as you can see, Ralph seems to have picked the one that involves the most cheese. Scarlet Snake. 
Scarlet Snake is feeling scummy, and she has a tummy ache. Meanwhile, we've been wondering what happened to Kim's birthday cake. As you can see there, Scarlet Snake seems to have eaten something rather large. And in the background, it seems that her birthday cake has gone missing. Turkey Tom. Tom tumbled off the turkey truck. We heard his frightened cries. With Thanksgiving Day a week away, Tom placed him in a suit and tie. We thought he looked invincible. Tom wandered down the hall, and now he's our assistant principal. Wow. That's quite a promotion for the turkey here. And it seems he's canceled Thanksgiving and instead said, Be nice to a turkey. All right, now we're on to you. We're getting near the home stretch here. It's an umbrella bird. Don't say a word. Don't say a word. Don't startle our umbrella word. Our umbrella bird. This bird's so wide. This bird's so flat. Miss Darling wears him as a hat. Please don't give this bird a scare. He might fly off and pull her hair. So looks like they're on a bus, and we got the umbrella bird hanging out like a wig on her. And everyone else seems to be enjoying themselves. All right, we're on to V. Vincent Vulture. On our field trip in December, in the desert far from culture, where most people never venture, we went searching for a vulture. Vincent circled high above us, seeking carcasses to crunch. Could he ever learn to love us? Yes, Miss Darling had a hunch. She caught Vincent in an instant with a three-week-old school lunch. Kinda gross. We've got the vulture hanging out there, and everybody down below. All right, we're on to W. Will Warthog. Will Warthog is not handsome. His aroma is not sweet. His hair is rough. His voice is gruff. It's known he is not neat. His tusks are rather hazardous. His brain's not very big. But what a bore, how we adore this less-than-perfect pig. And unfortunately, it seems they kicked with a soccer ball toward Will's way, and Will just didn't, didn't seem to uh, have the best luck with it there. We've got Xenia the X-ray fish. Xenia the X-ray fish swims serenely in a dish. We like to sit and watch her dinner when it is already in her. Huh, that's kind of wild. As you can see, they're putting, looks like alphabet soup inside of her. And you can see inside of her because she's an x-ray fish. Now we've got Yorick the Yak. Yikes! Yorick the Yak is on the attack. He's covering us with kisses. Yuck. The kiss of a yak is, is a huge gooey smack. So we're very relieved when he misses. Yaks are a lot like cows. I got those big tongues. And finally, we've got to Z. Z? With a bunch of question marks. We entered a contest to win a Zorilla. We thought it would be kind of like a gorilla. Uh, a warm-hearted ape with plenty of spunk. Surprise, a Zorilla is only a skunk. And since we got him, just why is it? No one ever comes to visit. Please let us know if you should see a better pet that starts with Z. Can you guys see a better pet that starts with Z in the, this image? Maybe a little hard to see, but I think I see something right, right over here. Well, that was... There's a zoo in room 22. I'd say with 26 or so animals, there is definitely a zoo, a zoo in room 22. Um, thank you guys for joining me for this reading, and happy Read Across America Day from your folks over here at Chiha Park and Zoo.